as about a million people told me on Twitter. Get it? A million. It's March. Love, love. I'm a oh, my goodness! Usher! He fires it over. Golston, three. Got it! Milwaukee has tied the game. He's going to try the three. That's a tough one. And it's in. The bank's open. Oh, my goodness. We're going to a third overtime in Cleveland. <laughs> Bam tips it up twice. It doesn't go now? in. It counts. Oh, my God. It counts. It counts. Bam. It's March, and it's already madness. Welcome to Countdown to Game Day. See what I did there? Woo! Very original. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> Covered by State Farm, Christine Williams, and I'm Jason Fitz. As we have been throughout the course of the college basketball season, we are here for you for the next 30 minutes to get you caught up and ready for all things college basketball and to get you ready for game day this morning. Christine, we start with some congrats. Liberty has punched their ticket. Liberty headed to the big dance, and that's it's, it's starting to feel like it's real, like the tournament is actually going to be here. We're going to get it. I mean, we've gotten good basketball all season, so I'm very excited, but also very excited for Liberty. Congratulations. You, you say, are you, are you genuinely excited? No, or? I am because we've gotten good basketball okay. all season. So I feel like March is going to be crazy. It's been a crazy year. So I just feel like the craziness has already started. You are so right that it is a chaotic year. And we saw it throughout the course of the week and this week in, in the college basketball landscape. Yeah. Bunch of upsets. We're trying to figure out who's good, who's bad. It is the last weekend of the regular season through all of this. So... Let's get a little help. Let's grow the wolf pack by one with one of our favorites. Dallin Cuff going to join us. Let's get Dallin's thoughts as we go in to the last weekend of the college basketball season before conference tournaments start in earnest. And in true college fashion, we're going to do like a regular season final exam, Dallin. And now, uh, as you can see from the Nike Ooh. basketball behind you, you went to Columbia. You're smart. You are going to ace this exam. We're going to ask you some exam-themed questions. You give us your thoughts. We'll start. Are you ready for this? Look at that with the little hat. That's very studious. Hat. Did you ever wear glasses? I will say this is, the, this is the most prepared I've ever been for an exam. No <laughs> doubt about it. I'm actually ready for this one. We're in college. It's not the case. So I'm good. All right. I, I love the, the graduate look for you. You look very studious. Let's start with the uh, – we'll, we'll start easy. Who gets the fourth A+. Plus? You're grading on a curve. You get four teams to get an A+, plus, also known as a tourney top seed. We know Gonzaga, Michigan, Baylor seem to have earned A+, pluses in the minds of everyone. So who gets that fourth final number one seed? Uh, I hate being a prisoner of the moment, uh, but I do think it's Illinois, and primarily because they, they, they beat Michigan. They don't beat Michigan. They throttled Michigan this past week uh, without Io DeSumo. They're 3-0, and and Io is one of the top five players in the country. He's out right now with a, uh, a facial injury. Hopefully he'll be back soon, but he's the best closer in college basketball. He's got multiple triple-doubles on the year, and they went into Michigan and destroyed them without him. Andre Curbelo, the freshman, has emerged. Uh, you see Grandison's played better. Kofi Coburn's been really good. Adam Miller, another freshman. So in the long term, when you get to the Big Ten tournament next week and the NCAA tournament, this is really going to benefit them to have these younger players in particular step up, own this role, and Trent Frazier be a leader for them and make plays as well and kind of own things without Io in there. So I give them the A+. I think they get the fourth one seed. They have eight quad one wins. Uh, now the Big Ten tournament is going to be brutal, and they could lose in the first round, and that may change the equation. But I think in the balance of the year, when you look at their resume, compared with Alabama's, Iowa's, Ohio State's, the other teams in that running. I think Illinois is slightly better and even more impressive because of what they did this past week without Iowa. I mean, we've been trying to figure out who the fourth, third, fourth best team in the country is all season, so it'll be interesting to watch that play out. All right, next up, who will finish as valedictorian? Of course, Gonzaga is the only remaining undefeated team and has been in the, is the number one team in the AP poll. They've been that way the whole season. Now, are you going to take Gonzaga – or the field to win the tournament. This is easy, Christine. This is this isn't this is a multiple choice. This is a simple, <laughs> you know, one word answer. The field. I mean, this is this is no problem because not because Gonzaga's not great. You can't leave out Baylor. Like when you leave out Baylor, right now in Vegas, you can bet Gonzaga, Baylor, or the field. And in that one, I've said multiple times, I think it's crazy, but I would take Gonzaga or Baylor over wow. the field. That's how much respect I have for both their programs. Baylor is back to where they were pre- Pre their COVID pause, they were at a great comfort behind win against WVU. Followed that up with a more dominant performance against Oklahoma State at home. This team is back where they are. If you're going to give me everybody else, including them, then I take the field. You throw in Baylor, eh, different discussion. Wow. But this one, I, I got this. I'll take the field over the Zags. Look, this always feels, by the way, like the easiest bet. Whenever you have the option of one 
or 100 things over here, I take the 100. That just seems like good. By the way, a little tease here. We'll add some Baylor star power to the show in just a few minutes. All right, we're going to keep this going. Uh, we'll get a little turn paper action here. Who do you think is most likely to fail their turn paper? In other words, what big name team most likely to go out early in the tourney? Having me have flashbacks to the history of the Mongols. I won't uh, explain that story, <laughs> but it did not go well for me. Uh, that did not end well. Um, I will say UVA, who are still the defending champs, which is kind of weird. They are, they are the defending national champs and clearly a different crew. Jay Huff, who's getting scored on down there, as well as Kia Clark, played on that national championship team. But that's the problem. Defensively, UVA is not what they have always been through Tony Bennett's tenure. They're 30th in the nation in adjusted defensive efficiency. They have not been that low since 2011. Usually they're top five, and when they play that slow pace and they grind you down defensively and they're efficient offensively, they're very hard to beat. Yes, they're a good offensive team, but their defense is just good. It needs to be great. And when they played really good competition, Florida State the other day, you know, throttled them a couple weeks ago. They've lost to North Carolina State at home. They lost to Duke on the road. Three straight losses. They snapped that this past week. They beat Miami, but Miami's not a very good team. Defensively is a concern with UVA. So the, the way they play, really slow, and the fact they're not guarding at the same level – I could see them getting knocked out from the first or second round. They have a lot of talented players, but they've got to guard better. And as Tony Bennett told me this past week, we have to be consistent. And we just have not been consistent on the defensive end. I don't think all of a sudden it's just going to happen when it gets to March. So they could probably be, of the, other, of the big brand name teams, a lot of them may not be in the dance, like Duke and, Duke and Kentucky. <laughs> UVA will be there. They could just get bounced early. The ACC has been so interesting this year. I know you cover the ACC a lot. It's just very interesting. Is a word. Very yeah, yeah. I like that. I like that word. It's a nice word to use. <laughs> um, okay, so you mentioned how the Big yeah. Ten tournament will be very tough for whatever team will come out of there. So this question is: Who needs to ace the ACC or the the tourney? <laughs> the tourney in general. I feel like I just gave that answer away. But who needs to ace their conference tournament? Well, you actually just touched on it. The ACC is, 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 you guys said, interesting. It's just down. We can just say that, guys. The ACC is not <laughs> as good as it has been in the past. Duke is the team that has to win their conference tournament. Right now, they're on the outside looking in. They've lost back-to-back -back games. They lost to Louisville at home last Saturday. Louisville was on the right side of the bubble right now. Duke on the wrong side of the bubble. Then Duke follows that up with a loss in the middle of the week on the road. Another bu bubble team, Georgia Tech. When you lose to other teams that are right there in your space, that's not good. Those are big opportunities that they flush down the toilet. They got Carolina at home. I mean, Carolina on the road later today, 6 o'clock on ESPN. Huge game. They have to win that. And then they have to get to the, at least the final of the ACC tournament. But if they want to feel good, they got to win the whole thing. They got If they got to win the ACC tournament and, and earn their seat at the table in the NCAA tournament, that's, that, that's their best path. That's the path that guarantees they can get there. I'm not sure they can do it. But when you look around the country, they are the biggest brand name in college basketball that is, that is on the wrong side of the bubble right now. The only way to rectify that and control your own situation is to win the whole thing. they got to win their tournament. All right, so we'll keep it going here with a little bit of fun here about a player now. We're going to ask you a Kemba Walker question, but let me explain this here. Who's most likely to pull a 2011 Kemba Walker? <laughs> and we all know what this feels like. I'm talking like group project where you know one person better do all the work because the rest of us are probably going to show up very little. Like, who is the person that's going to carry his entire group through the tourney? This is my wheelhouse, especially in high school, just looking around the class and being like, I want to be with them. I got to be in that group because they're going to get it done. Yeah. And I'm going to go with Creighton's Marcus Zagorowski. We know all the stuff Creighton's going through off the floor right now with uh, Coach Greg McDermott being suspended, using the word plantation multiple times after a loss last Saturday. So this team's got to come together. Zagorowski is one of the best point guards in the country. And he, at times this year, he's been hurt. He hasn't played up to the potential of a top five player in the nation, which I thought he would be. But he's got a lot of talented players around him. But when he is going at a different level, he's the straw that stirs the drink for a very potent uh, cocktail, I would say. Their offensive execution is great. He's got a lot of pieces around him. But if he elevates his game, he doesn't need to put him on his back. He's just got to make key plays for himself and his teammates at the right times, lead on the defensive end. They do usually have five guys that can dribble, pass, and shoot, which is very rare in college basketball. They have five skilled ball creators off the bounce and with the ball in their hands. But Zagorowski is the main dude. If he starts to emerge, maybe they can overcome some of the stuff they're dealing with off the court galvanizes a unit, and he could be the guy that kind of leads them. It ain't going to be Kemba, because Kemba's a, that's a one-shot deal. We haven't seen that in, in maybe forever after that. This one guy, maybe probably Danny Manning, in all honesty, to put a team on his back and take them all the way to a title like that that nobody expected. Zagorowski doesn't have to do that much, but that's the closest comparison I can give you with that question. Now, obviously, Dallin, we're having a lot of fun. Uh, there is a a serious note here in college basketball around Colin Gillespie for anyone that didn't see. He tore his MCL Wednesday. He's expected to miss the rest of the season. That's a massive loss at this point for Villanova. So what impact does it have to Villanova on the court in your mind? 
First off, I feel for the man. You know, like that was senior night. His family's in the crowd. They're crying. He's upset. You kind of knew when he went down, you're hoping it wasn't something serious. It's the torn MCL. He, he is out for the year. And what it means for them is he's their heart and soul. They have great players. Jeremiah Robinson Earl is their best player. Justin Moore is a very creative guy with the ball in his hands. Caleb Daniels has been good as, the trans as a transfer in. But overall, Gillespie's the heartbeat of that team. When they need a bucket sometimes, it's not just the point guard that creates when you think about a point guard out in the perimeter. They'll put him in the post and they can play through him on the block, and he's able to score and facilitate offense from there. He poses a lot of problems, and he, he is, again, their heart and soul. So to lose him at this point in time, when you really don't have much time to figure out how, how J-Rod doesn't have time to figure out how do we correct this, how do we fill in, how do we play differently, that's the problem. If this happens in January, it's still devastating. But you have a chance, you have time to figure out and tinker with things and work with things. They're going right into a game on Saturday, and then they got the, the game today, and then they have the Big East tournament, and, and you're right into tournament time, do or die. So this is... A brutal loss, feel for him. This is the best culture in college basketball, but even their culture can't sustain a blow like this. You have to find a way. They'll always be together and playing hard, but when you lose a guy like this, it does ding you. I'm interested to see how they bounce back and how they try to play differently. I just feel for, for their entire club and him, particularly as a senior, to have that happen on senior night. Yeah, I think that echoes the sentiment of so many of us that you worry about the team, but ultimately the individual with that sort of an injury. All right, let's get back to having a little bit of fun here. Dallin, usually we like to do who's hooping, but this week we thought we'd mix it up a little bit and start with the opposite. Who's not hooping? We'll take a look at some uh, plays gone mm. wrong here, and we'll start with a little Seton Hall action. So this is Bryce Aiken, and, you know, trash talking sometimes goes a little wrong. He's at the line. He's 23 and 23 on the season. Then this happens. Uh, I ain't never missing. Oh! Uh, I ain't never missing. Oh! Uh, I ain't never missing. Oh! Uh, I ain't never missing. Uh, oh! I mean, I like <laughs> the confidence, but Lord, Dallin, you ever, uh, you ever put yourself in a pickle there with the trash talking? Uh, I mean, I'm sure I have. There's there, that, That's undoubted. And actually, that, that's probably the place that I would have most likely have done it. That was the free throw line. Because, I mean, I, I was money at the line like Bryce is. Bryce is a grad transfer from Harvard, too. This is a really smart, talented young man that's <laughs> had some injury issues in his career. Um, steps to the line like that. The bigger problem, you know what technically what the issue was? It wasn't the talking. He leaned back as he yeah. shot it. He started moving back, which he, he, he was like in it. He's talking. He's not thinking about his mechanics. And then it was in his head. He missed the next one, too. And he missed it long. You can see him almost force it. He leaned into the shot. So him talking trash got in his own head, and he started messing with his mechanics, which are usually picture perfect on the free throw line. So not, not the smartest move for a, a talented young man. I, I love that because uh, he also missed the second one, so then he became 23 and 25. It's amazing. I can't believe that happened. All right, next up. What yeah. was that? Last night, Louisiana Monroe taking on South Alabama. Shot clock winding down. Monroe's. Munro's Marso, this is a alliteration here. Marco Morency is wide open, and can you please just explain what exactly he's doing? What happened here? What what happened? You want me to explain that? <laughs> you want me to articulate what happened there? Uh, I don't know if I have anything for you. What I can most liken it to, I don't know if he's got like a mental block, but have anybody seen Charles Barkley swing a swing a golf club? That's what this looked like to me. Like, I don't know why you're double clutching. There's nobody around. The shot clock's winding down. And even bad shooters at this time are most comfortable because you have no choice. You have to rise and shoot the ball. There's no option. There's nobody around you, and the shot clock's about to expire. Just stroke that thing. He double clutches. And I, I mean, I don't think I've ever seen this in a Division I game where a guy <laughs> missed a shot that bad that was that open, and for no reason. Double pumped. Yeah, like, there are no extra points for double pumping. I don't know what that was. All I know here is that if Dallin and I were playing on the same team in a pickup game, I would never. If I did that, I would never see the ball again. He would just, he would just look at me and say, "You go sit down. We'll play with four. All right, let's, uh, let's go to a little game. You, you, you should, you should walk, you should walk right off the floor. You should, if you do that, you should just walk right off. And afterwards, you see what he did? He did the old wipe his hands off. Oh yeah. Like, yeah. What's, dude, what's that ain't about your hand? hands. That ball could be covered in ice. That ain't about that. I don't know what that was. At least he didn't say my bad. Like we don't know. Okay, so. Let's get to the next one. A little bit of game situation here. You got to know what's going on. Northern Colorado versus Weber State. Tie game under 10 seconds to go. Northern Colorado misses the shot. Overtime, right? That's what they think. But no. Northern Colorado's Dalen counts mistakenly fouls. Weber State would hit a free throw and win. I mean, there was just no reason to do anything here. And he comes in and fouls him. Heartbreaking. Oh, heartbreaking did moment. You, did you say his name was Dalen or Jalen? What did you say his name was? Uh, uh, Dalen? 
Dalen is what's in the. So uh, is he spell? I hope he, if he spells it's it the same way as me, and he's technically my namesake, pronounces it differently. He's he's not your namesake. It's D A Y L E N. He's got a Y, and he's got a Y in there, Dalen. Okay, good. I'm glad. It's, I'm glad. I, I mean, they, people mispronounce my name that way all the time. I'm glad it's not my namesake because this one, this is tough, man. You you gotta know that. You gotta know the time and scoring situation. I don't want to pile on the young man because he just ended their season. But this stuff is inexcusable, and I don't know how that happens when you don't know the score. It's basically, you do, not, do you know the score of the game you're playing in? Like, that's one thing if you're playing a pickup game, like we were just talking about Fitz. If it's, 11, if it's point game and you don't know that, that's bad enough. When it's tied up in a tournament game with your season kind of on the line, you, you just you can't make that mistake. I feel for him, but that that's a dagger. Yeah, he, he, he's still being nice, Alan. If I had that brain fart, we were playing pickup. You know that, that you'd have words for me. I'm just saying, <laughs> you always make the wolf back better when you come on. Sure. Thank you so much for hanging out with us this morning. Okay. Have a great day. We appreciate you, my friend. Been fun all year, guys. Have a good one. All right, you guys know you want to be on College Game Day. All you got to do is go to collegegameday.com to enter for a chance to virtually join Reese, Jay, LaFonso, and Seth this season on College Game Day. Today is the last day to enter, so stop wasting time. Get out there. Do it. Do it now. All right, people. Baylor men's basketball is 20-1 and one on the season. They're they good. three in the AP poll. They're kind of good. So, naturally, <laughs> we're going to welcome in this guy, Jared Butler, Baylor guard, to join the show. This is our second Baylor player to join the show. So I want to ask you first, before we get to the basketball stuff, we still want to talk about competition, but something a little different. We talked to Maceo Teague last month. Listen to this. I saw an article about the fact that you and Jared Butler like to go head to head and play Uno. So I was wondering, I mean, obviously you guys are undefeated as teammates, but somebody has to be the winner and the loser in the head to head matchup with Uno. So who's the champion amongst you two? Uh, the score is 11 and four right now and I am winning. Oh, wow. Woo! Yeah. I, I, so I don't, I don't know where, where the shirt thing came from, but uh, I am definitely winning the series right now by a lot. Is that a statement to your greatness at the game or his terribleness at the game? <laughs> no, I'm just, I, I think that I'm definitely a top uh, one player in the world. And so I would say it's for me. <laughs> All right, Jared, what are your thoughts on this? I, I so I love that he brought that up. Um, he is winning right now. He's oh, winning. Wow. It's like eleven to four. Wow! Um, but the only it's it's the crazy thing is he's only gotten up in like a span of like um, a week. We were on the road and we played Uno for about you know all day, two days in a row, and he won. He got lucky. And um, Uno's a game of runs. Anybody that, that plays Uno knows that. And you know eventually the the, the score is gonna be. I'm gonna be back up sooner or later. So. I wouldn't worry too much about it. Uh, well, we're, believe me, we're going to hold this as long as we can. We're going to continue to bring both of you back just to feed yeah. the Uno rivalry. Okay, so let's get into a little bit of last week for you guys. Uh, you, We love to th throw out some highlights, and you had some big ones last week, starting with a monster dunk against Oklahoma State on Thursday. We've got the footage here. I, I, I just got to know what it feels like as they show this. You know, walk me through this process of you, you're up, you know what's happening. What's it feel like? Uh, it feels kind of exhilarating, um, and it's a lot of adre adrenaline going on right there. Especially when you see the guy come over, it's like, oh, Lord, he's, he's coming over. I don't know what he's going to do. I don't know if he's going to jump or not. But I'm, all I'm thinking in my head is I better jump as high as I can, and uh, that's it. But, um, no, nah, that's it. Yeah, what makes you more professional than me is that you walked away from him afterwards. I mean, I would have been right there just reminding him the entire time. <laughs> that wasn't your only great highlight, though. We've also got this one, the game-tying layup, two seconds left against number six, West Virginia, in a huge game on Tuesday. Sent this game to overtime. So what's better, a huge dunk or a game-tying layup at the end? Uh, I think the game time layup, um, we had so much on the line. Um, my teammates trusted me with the ball at the end of the game. And um, that's for a Big 12 championship right there. And Big 12 championship is our goal. And I, we, we needed that layup more than that dunk, I think, in my opinion. How do you change your, like, approach? You know, because he's, he's in the air. He's going to body you up. You're going to get hit. How do you manage to keep your balance and still get the shot off? Uh, all I'm thinking about is winning the Big 12 championship. Uh, I'm looking at him. I'm, I'm, he's a, you know, phenomenal player. And I'm going in there, and I'm saying I'm not losing this battle because we got to win. And um, I, I'm just waiting for him to go down as I stay in the air and just finish the layup. But, um, yeah, that's that's Big 12 championship on mine all, all day. <laughs> I mean, you mentioned that. It's Baylor's first ever Big 12 championship, also the first conference title since 1950. That's a very long time, no offense. Yeah. But uh, how does it feel to win the championship and run the table th like this? 
Uh, it feels amazing. Um, Coach Drew and the staff, um, they've done such a great job of, with us. And um, I think it's just divinely ori oriented how, um, how we all came together. Um, we're such a great group of guys. Everybody's humble. Everybody's willing to win and sacrifice for the team. And um, I, I love being around these guys. So it's, it's, it's a special moment just being with the group of guys. And um, as you can see, Baylor Nation was, was amazing that night too. Um, but I, I enjoyed it and it means a lot to us and, and the years to come. Now you guys, uh, last month missed uh, three weeks, about three weeks due to COVID. Your team struggled in the first few games back. You've talked a little bit about it. And I know uh, you've been asked after Thursday's game, you said you guys are only at about 75%. So a little real talk here. How has COVID impacted the way that you guys are playing right now? Yeah, college basketball is hard. Um, emotionally um physically so taking three weeks off like for a while I, for a while there i thought i was like a regular student just just going to class not having practice um just kind of not in the game mode you know and um in college basketball you have to be in that mode all the time with all the games and um but i think we're slowly getting back to it and uh, we're slowly getting our, our legs back underneath us which is good and our defense is expanding getting better a little bit day by day so um you know, I'm just excited to, for us to be back to where we were before the COVID. You talked about how college basketball is hard. Scott Drew actually said the Big 12 is hard before you guys lost to Kansas last week. Um, that was very, it was a little bit of foreshadowing, kind of odd. But you guys have one loss. Gonzaga has no losses. Michigan's still kind of creeping up. There's teams that are going into this tournament and anything is possible. How are you feeling with your chances going into the tournament? I'm feeling really good. Um, I think our team is is um, headed in the right direction right now, especially after the adversity that we had all season. And um, I think the confidence after winning the Big 12, um, you know, the, the people we're playing late in the season, I think there's some really good teams that's gonna that it's gonna battle test stuff. So I think that's gonna help us out going into the to the March Madness tournament. So um, you know, I'm really excited, man. We got great players: Adam Flagler, John, Flo Thamba. You know, we, we got great players going into the game. You love to see it. Uh, I'm glad that you guys won this season. I was sick of Kansas taking over the Big 12 every <laughs> single year. So congratulations and thanks so much for joining us. And thanks for joining us. Keep us updated on the UNO battles. Let's go. <laughs> I got you. I got you. Tons of great action today all across the network. Big game. Illinois taking on Ohio State, number four, number seven. That's at four Eastern. And, of course, Duke, North Carolina, six Eastern tonight. Let's get into that one, Christine. Who better to talk about Duke versus North Carolina than a former Blue Devil, ACC Network analyst. Yeah. I'm excited for this. Carlos Boozer joining us on the show. Booz, thanks for hanging out with us. We appreciate you joining us. Uh, both teams coming off a loss. ESPN bracket guys got North Carolina as a 10 seed Duke on the first four out. Uh, start with the easy stuff. Who needs this game more? First of all, I'm a, I'm a pretty good Uno player myself. I like to take on them <laughs> young college guys right there. Let me get that out the way. But I, I think Duke does, no question. I think North Carolina has turned the corner. They've, they've got some great momentum going into the ACC tournament. UNC is sitting very pretty. Duke has had an up-and-down season. They got hot a few games ago, but then they lost two overtime games. This, this is a must-win for Duke. Get them some momentum going into the tournament. And they may have to go all the way into the final, at least to the semifinal, uh, to have a shot at the tournament. You mentioned Duke and UNC facing off. The last time that these two teams played, UNC won, Duke lost. So what's the mindset going into a matchup like this? It's a rivalry game, especially as a loser. What's the mindset going into this matchup? Revenge <laughs> is a dish best served cold. You guys know how it goes. You get beat down. You lose a game, especially in a rivalry game like that. You can't sleep. You're disappointed. You're looking in the mirror like, what else can we do? I got to do more. I got to do more. My team got to do more. The Blue Devils are going to come out and try to put, impose their will, set the tone for this game, and try to finish it out. They played the rough. pretty good game the last time these two played each other, but UNC came victorious. Uh, a lot of great shots, a lot, a lot of great moments there. So if I'm Duke, I'm coming in at all costs, whatever we got to do to win the game. Look, you guys can watch Duke take on North Carolina tonight at 6 Eastern on ESPN and the ESPN app. But second screen it, you can do all of that. You can also watch this I am stoked for. Vince Carter and Booz <laughs> hanging out for the all-ACC watch party on the ACC Network where they'll watch the game, share stories, talk about playing in the rivalry. Man, cannot wait for that one to be coming up. Now, in the meantime, let's get to some Wendy's Wooden Watch. Uh, this week, we're spotlighting Oklahoma State freshman uh, ESPN number one NBA draft prospect, Cade Cunningham. We've been talking about him all year. Booz, when you watch Cade, what do you love about his game and what do you think really translates to the NBA for him? 
stud, honestly, can shoot the ball, can handle the ball, can get the lane, can create for his teammates, can create for others. I think his game translates perfectly to this style of the NBA. I think he's going to have a great career, obviously finishing off over there at Oklahoma State. But when he gets to the NBA, he can do a little bit of everything. He can defend. He's a great scorer, three-level scorer, inside mid-range, and obviously the three-point line. He has, what I like about him is he has great poise. You know, game on the line, you can put the ball in his hands and he'll create something for him or his teammates. So I think his game is going to translate perfect to the NBA, especially the way the game is played today. It is fun to watch him play. He's a freshman. Uh, I know. I mean, that's where we are now. I and mean, it's just, it's, it's incredible. Uh, speaking of greatness, let's look at some plays with you. Surprisingly great plays brought to you by State Farm. We'll start with a little bit of I Believe I Can Fly here. Providence on the inbounds play. I love this. Nate Washington soaring up for the one hand. Woo! How hard is that to do off the inbounds? I mean, Booz, what's that like? It's, it's tough because everybody's playing man to man, you're all, and then you just take off and jump. And go, similar to what Vince Carter used to always do, just take off and jump over your opponent. That's impressive right there. All right. All right. Next up, senior night dreams. Texas Tech student manager Ty Larson. He got into the game on senior night. He became eligible that morning, and then in the final seconds of the blowout, wow. he took – the charge. Wow. Amazing awesome. To see. I mean, that's, that's, that's the kind of leadership you want from your senior. Give up his body for the team. Amazing moment right there for that guy. Congratulations. Yeah, that, that's just fun to watch. It's everything that's great about college basketball. All right, let's keep with yeah. the great plays from last week. Villanova's Jermaine Samuels falls on the ground. <laughs> he's running. He's running. He's running. He falls. Oh. And then he just oh. keeps sliding and sliding <laughs> and sliding. Going. I mean, what's your longest wow. slide on the floor, Booz? It definitely was not 30 feet like that. Well, that was pretty impressive <laughs> right there. I remember seeing Shaq do something like that in the NBA a couple of years ago. I mean, back when he was playing. That was pretty impressive. I don't know what was on that guy's back. All right, yes in the face. Marquette's DJ Carton breaks the press and drives all the way down oh. the floor. And then he does this. That is embarrassing. That was, nasty. that was nasty. Do you look somebody in the eye after that happens to you? Oh, yeah, I do. I've been screaming a whole lot. I'm going to all of I want them to remember me. They're going to remember me. <laughs> I like that. That's how you get teched up. All right, let's get a little bit of who did it better here. Oregon State two for one against Utah that we want you to weigh in on. First, we got Maurice. Uh, Ale- mm, yeah, Ooh. with the steal. One hand <laughs> thrown down <laughs> on Brandon Carlson. That's that was good. good. Same game. Good. He, he, he quick dunked him. <laughs> Ooh. Yeah, that's pretty good. But now we've got this one coming from Gianni Hunt. Look at this. Oh, Ooh. yeah, that might want that might have been better right better? there. Better, really? Because he's a he's a he's a uh, maybe because he's littler. You know, he's like a guard, maybe like six feet. That makes sense. A six two. That looked pretty good right there with the left hand. Yeah, I mean, it's just like six. listen. Where's the defense at? How are these guys getting dunked on left or right right here? That's what I want to know. They just want to be put on posters. That's obviously what's going on. We could spend the whole show talking about where the defense is in general. I mean, at this point, that's just not it's not as much fun. All right. We also got a little bit of Riverside here fun. You see Riverside's Oliver Hayes Browns with a mullet, beard, and shave size look. You in on this, Booze? Oh, my gosh. How old is this guy? That's a, Listen, I'm pretty impressive. First of all, I don't have that much hair. Kudos to him for growing it out so I haven't been able to have options. And his beard is solid. Look, how old is this guy? Man, that is... Uh, that, no idea. It is spectacular self-confidence to be able to stand out and do this. Absolutely. I think our team has put together a little bit of work here. Uh, they, they they decided they would see what Carlos Boozer would look like with that same image. And <laughs> you don't have yeah. hair. I don't hate it. I got to be honest. Are you? <laughs> Listen, I have, uh, guys in the back, I appreciate that. Thank you. I would not do that. This is not my look. I would have braids. I would have a fire mohawk. I might even have waves. Thank you for putting me on there, but that is not my look. I don't know. There's a little bit of like Randy Watson swagger to that little coming to America a swagger. Randy that's, Watson. I'm just hey, saying. Man, I'm just saying. Boo's reference right there. Oh Randy gosh. Watson. <laughs> Christine gets the mullet treatment too. The biggest part of this is I was thinking as we okay. saw Boo's picture, I was like, I wonder what I would look like with a mo- with a mullet. So here we go. Thanks, wow. guys. Oh, oh, they gave oh, me a little okay. bit of one. Like it, it's good. Like yeah. I, I've had worse hair in my life, unfortunately. I can't even deny that. <laughs> I feel like that's how your that's hair pretty good. looks. Yeah, that's how your I, I say you go full Randy Watson tonight. Hey, thanks for hanging out with us. Remember, you can watch Carlos Boozer, Vince Carter tonight on the All ACC Watch Party, 6 Eastern on the ACC Network. We appreciate you, my friend. Thanks for hanging out with us. Thanks, Booz. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Man, that, that, that mullet look on him was absolute fire. Uh, coming up on game day, you're looking at the live game day set. 
They're going to get you Vince Carter's best dunks of the college basketball season. You don't want to miss that. Celebrate some great seniors. Corey Kispert and Joshua Langford join the show. Plus, UMBC's 5'2 engine, Darnell Rogers. We talked to him earlier this season. He's going to be on game day talking to the guys. You don't want to miss that, of course. And as always, it's that time of year. Don't forget, it's time to sign up and play the ESPN Tournament Challenge on ESPN.com slash forward slash bracket. The out your brackets, play against your family, friends, and even your enemies. Also, join to play in the Celebrity Brackets groups. You can play in the Men's and Women's Tournament Challenge game. Brackets available starting March 14th at 8 p.m. Eastern. Christine, you should come play in the Spain and Fitz bracket with us. Okay. <laughs> That's all she has to say about that. I'm, I'm shook. All right, the ACC championship game is what we'll be doing next week. You can watch Countdown to the ACC championship next week, 8 p.m. Eastern. We'll be back doing it then. Thank you so much for hanging out with us all season long to get you ready for game day. It's been a blast. She's Christine Williamson. I'm Jason Fitz. For us and for everybody behind the scenes that's made the show happen for you every Saturday morning all season long, we can't thank you enough for giving us your time. This is Countdown to Game Day, covered by State Farm.